There's something deeply disturbing in deep space. Something so incredibly massive, it could swallow an entire star. People tend to be fascinated by things which are big and scary, like dinosaurs. And there's really nothing that's bigger and scarier than a black hole. Practically invisible and billions of kilometers from Earth. We think right there is a black hole. Right there. And the more we try to understand them, the stranger black holes become. Everything we know about common sense is thrown out the window. The equations no longer make any sense. Black holes could force us to abandon everything we thought we knew about the universe. There aren't questions much bigger than this. There's really a lot that we don't understand. <laughs> the harder we look, the more questions we uncover. Nowhere is this more true than for a black hole. I think of a black hole as the symbol of what it is we don't understand about the universe. Black holes are one of the most mysterious objects in the cosmos. What are black holes made of? Oh, OK, already you've asked me a question that I can't answer. So are black holes made of anything? Maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> black hole. Hmm. We don't really have any idea what's going on, so. Um, I don't understand black holes. I love black holes. I love black holes because I don't understand them. We think they're out there. We can't see them. Black holes are, by definition, completely black. Nothing can escape it, even light. And that's why it's called a black hole, because light can't come out of it. Black holes, totally mysterious, billions of kilometers away, and practically impossible to see. The star was gone. It exploded as a supernova and had now disappeared. And we think right there is a black hole. Right there. But I can't ever be 100% sure about that. As images of black holes go, these few dark pixels are about as good as it gets. In fact, black holes are so hard to see, most of what we know about them hasn't come from those observing the universe, but from another group of scientists, the theorists. And the universe they study is in their heads. But at the heart of its description of a black hole, theorists found a problem with Einstein's mathematics. Something so disturbing, his theory breaks down completely. Inside these equations, there's a monster. In the extreme gravity at the core of a black hole, Einstein's equations spiral wildly out of control. After a very long, tedious calculation, I mostly get zeros, but the non-zero term is given as follows. M is the mass of the black hole. R describes the distance from the black hole. Here is the problem, right there. When R is equal to zero, the point at which physics itself breaks down. To a physicist, it's a monstrosity. It means that, first of all, gravity is infinite at the center of a black hole, that time stops. And what does that mean? Space makes no sense. It means the collapse of everything we know about the physical universe. In the real world, there's no such thing as infinity. Therefore, there is a fundamental flaw in the formulation of Einstein's theory. According to Einstein, then, all the mass of the black hole is contained within an infinitely small point that takes up precisely no space at all. This impossible object of infinite density and infinite gravity is called the singularity. We know what a singularity is. A singularity is when we don't know what to do. Now I could have a singularity here and then boom, out comes a pink elephant with purple stripes. 
And that's consistent with what the laws of physics predicts, because they don't predict anything. The singularity is when our understanding of nature breaks down. That's what a singularity is. Sure, there was a problem in these equations, but it didn't matter because Mother Nature could never create a black hole. It now appears that there's a supermassive black hole at the center of almost every galaxy. In the last century, black holes have gone from being mathematical curiosities to real objects in the cosmos, millions of times the mass of the sun, and seemingly crucial to the formation of galaxies. But physicists have always known that relativity is an incomplete theory of nature. Although it beautifully describes how gravity influences the motions of planets, stars, and galaxies, it can never describe the world at the smallest possible scales, the realm of atoms and the tiny particles that form them. To do that, they use a separate theory a theory called quantum mechanics. You might wonder why we'd want to apply quantum mechanics to something as large as a massive black hole, when quantum mechanics deals with very small. And that's because ultimately, at the heart of a large black hole is a singularity. Whatever a singularity really is, one thing we do know is it must be very, very small. It seems quite likely that in order to really understand what goes on inside a black hole, we will need quantum mechanics. That the final story of how a black hole works and what happens at the singularity can only be understood when quantum mechanics is included. This subatomic world quantum mechanics describes is nothing like the world we experience. Quantum mechanics tells us how the world works at a fundamental level. And it is stranger than you can imagine. In the quantum world, the mere act of observing changes what you see. You can't say where something is, only where it's likely to be. And anything that is possible, no matter how unlikely, happens all the time. Yet strange as quantum mechanics is, theorists believe the world it describes is the true nature of reality. Quantum mechanics is so weird, it may sound like science fiction. But it's not science fiction, it's science fact. But there's one thing quantum mechanics can't describe. Gravity. And it's not normally a problem, because atoms are so light, the effect of gravity is irrelevant. But there's one arena in which they're both important. And that arena is when things are both very small and the force of gravity is very large. And that's what happens inside a black hole. The singularity at the heart of a black hole is both astronomically heavy and infinitesimally small. To understand it, quantum mechanics alone wasn't enough. It needed to be extended to describe gravity. When physicists tried to combine the two theories, they encountered a familiar problem. I insert this into the probability that gravity will move from one point to another point. When I actually do this calculation, I get yet another integral. And when you do this integral, you get something which makes no sense whatsoever. An infinity. Total nonsense. In fact, you get an infinite sequence of infinities, infinitely worse than the divergences of Einstein's original theory. This is a nightmare beyond comprehension. The search for a theory of quantum gravity had fallen apart, because quantum mechanics and general relativity proved to be totally incompatible. I think the most embarrassing problem we have in theoretical physics is that we have these two different theories which won't talk to each other. We have Einstein's theory of gravity, which beautifully describes the very big and the very fast. And then we have quantum physics, which very successfully describes the very small. And yet, clearly nature has one unique way of operating. 
it's not schizophrenic. And we humans just don't seem to be able to find that way. The failure of these two great theories to understand black holes means they are, at best, an approximation to the laws governing the universe. The equations no longer make any sense. And nobody knows exactly what we're supposed to, to do about that. Well, it's awful. It means that physics is having a nervous breakdown. It means the collapse of physics as we know it, you know. Something is fundamentally wrong. Nature is smarter than we are. If we want to understand the universe, we must understand how quantum mechanics and gravity can live together. And so that's our challenge. So it's quite a big question. It's a huge question. There aren't questions much bigger than this. We don't understand. Yet the discovery of black holes means we don't fully understand anything. But far from being a problem, black holes represent one of the greatest opportunities in physics. Black holes are the key to taking the next step. They're the doorway to uh, our next step in understanding the basic laws of the universe around us. Unlocking the mysteries of black holes could provide the answer to the biggest question ever posed by the human mind. Because there's one other place where our current laws of nature fail as dramatically as they do in a black hole. So it's quite likely, if we understood the singularity associated with a black hole, we might resolve the question of how the universe began and where we came from. But while we might seem tantalizingly close, black holes and the theory that explains them remain just out of reach. Quantum gravity is the name that we give to the solution to this problem. We don't really know what quantum gravity is. What's frustrating with quantum gravity is that previous revolutions in physics, like quantum mechanics, relativity theory, were all brought on by a lot of clues from nature. And for quantum gravity, we have almost no clues at all. Right now, we're mostly stuck with having to figure this out with pencil and paper, just from theory. Have you ever seen a black hole? No. Have you ever seen a black hole? No. No one has ever seen a black hole directly. Here is an object in outer space that is beyond our mathematics, beyond our physical theories, demanding a theory beyond Einstein. And ironically, we can't see them. You can see how they warp the space around them. They don't emit anything. Nothing can escape. I suspect that this is a case where we need a new Einstein with a grand thought, completely new thought, that suddenly makes sense of things. If we one day succeed in finding this holy grail, these equations of everything, that's when the real work begins, to try to solve these equations and predict stuff. And that'll keep physicists out of harm's way for a long time, I think. We don't know what's out there. People might give you an answer, but they will probably be wrong. <laughs>